See, this is the real secret of life, to be completely engaged with the here and now. Welcome to the Human Derek Podcast, connecting you with the seven fundamentals of life that will take you to the next level. Everybody wants to fulfill the highest, truest expression of yourself. It, 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 it was all a dream. Today is about the power of you. You've now entered the Human Derek Podcast. And here we go. Hey, welcome to episode four. Uh, I will tell you that I just had a very weird experience. I was about to do my favorite part, talking about the sponsors. It's all really fun, actually. There's no favorite part. But I was about to talk about Guadalupe coffee roasters. And it felt weird. And I was like, why does it feel weird? I love this coffee. And I realized that someone very close to me, Went to Costa Rica recently and brought me back this Costa Rican coffee. It's pretty good. It's not as good as Guadalupe Coffee Roasters. Sorry, hope you're not offended. I love you. The person that brought it to me, you know who you are. And uh, it's really good, though. It has a special place of love because you brought it to me. Oh, man, now I'm in trouble either way. Really kind of worked myself into a pigeonhole here. But so I'm getting on here, right? And I'm like, all right, let's talk about Guadalupe coffee because it's so good. And I drink it daily. And I was like, wait a second. I haven't been drinking it daily lately. I've been mixing it up with this other Costa Rican coffee. I'm cheating on Guadalupe Coffee Roastery. What am I going to say to talk about how great their coffee is? So here we are. There's the facts. It's a great coffee company. Generally speaking, it's been my daily go-to coffee for years. And recently, I've been swindled away. But I'm coming back to you, Guadalupe. I have two fresh bags of beans up in my cupboard that you delivered to me and so good so good and actually i know some of you that are listening or have listened have also enjoyed it been seeing it on the instagram posts and hearing about it so super good coffee company this is your first time here in guadalupe coffee roastery guadalupe roastery.com they've got like ethiopian brazilian i think they actually have a costa rican bean or you can buy a ground i like the whole beans usually because i like the extra process of grinding it up and just smelling it and it's like a whole thing it's not just like ooh, chug some coffee for some caffeine it's an experience i feel like that's what i get from the time it arrives at my house and i open up the box and i check it out and their new packaging actually looks really freaking cool so congratulations on your new packaging guadalupe and uh, by the way a future episode coming with that the founder of guadalupe coffee roastery pretty cool guy so anyways there's my plug always have to be real and honest, I can't be like, I drink it daily if I sort of cheated on a little bit lately, but I know how I work. So I'm coming back I'm a creature of habit, especially when something is as fantastic as those beans. Oh yeah. You get 10% off when you type in the name Derek, D-E-R-E-K into the like coupon code, whatever it is. Whenever you go to check out, if you go to their website, Guadalupe roastery.com and you're like, Hey, this seems pretty legit. I'm going to give it a shot. When you're going to check out, whether you subscribe or whatever you end up doing by the way they, they also have some i'm getting a little squirrel brain here but they got some other pretty cool stuff on their website not just coffee beans i bought a coffee mug from them once they got other things so you can check them out but when you do that if you use the code derek you get 10 percent off one zero ten percent you can do that and uh there you go keeping it real guadalupe coffee roastery super delicious also thank you red pill 45 you didn't get the last episode canceled when i talked about you at the beginning so that's pretty cool that kind of stuff happens because the podcast made it to apple Podcasts. in fact congratulations thank you everyone for sharing uh, both feedback and episodes and all the posting on your instagram stories and wherever else you might have shared it with friends because somehow some crazy way this podcast made it to the top 52 on apple Podcasts for self-improvement kind of blows my mind it's pretty cool. So thanks everybody. Super big win. And uh, Red Pill 45 has not got us kicked off of there yet. I think they're flying under the radar. But they do have some pretty bold words when you check out their website. They are very patriotic, freedom. By the way, it's, it's strange that these words these days have such strong charge behind them in a way that feels new to me. Like, I don't, you know, growing up just saying freedom didn't seem like that big of a deal. I have a friend that went to a a health conference and i think it was in florida i don't know where they're going they're going somewhere 
probably Florida. It just feels good to say that. It's probably totally inaccurate, so don't quote me on that one. But they went to a Freedom Health Conference. And just hearing that, I'm like, oh, that sounds like trouble. So it's weird that the word freedom and patriotism and these things have now been associated with like disorder and chaos in a sense. But I don't know. You know, you have to decide for yourself. I am a big believer of like kind of middle ground neutral thinking where I don't care what you're for or against. I just like poking holes and stuff. I like really thinking hard and getting perspective. And so uh, some might call that disagreeable. I just call it really working to understand things. So Red Pill 45, by the way, super cool company, redpill45.com, some incredible clothing. Uh, Their design work is amazing. In fact, I have reached out on a little fun project that I'm working on and we'll hopefully be partnering up to work on something a bit fun that I'm excited about. And uh, they're just really cool. They have super incredible uh, design, freedom clothing, patriot clothing, red pill, red, 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 red pill 45.com. And again, you get 10% off if you type in the name Derek, D E R E K, when you check out their website, do that, take some dollars off. So let's get into the podcast. What's on today's podcast? Well, super cool guy named Brennan T. This is Tom Nichols. I like that he used his middle initial, but that was pretty cool. I was like, dude, you flex that middle initial sign on his Instagram. I was like, Brennan T. Nichols. So, uh, I mean, we start off right off the bat. We just jump into it. Talking about like how to win the Canadian lottery. Uh, it's kind of a joke. We will find out soon. Uh, we do talk about shoe fraud. So Brennan's in the sneaker world and I, I like shoes. I like comfortable shoes. I like shoes that look cool. I wouldn't say that I am like a shoe addict. I mean, I, I shoes do, um, they're super important. I know I was at physical therapy today and the different types of shoes I've worn there for balancing act and things like that have like a big impact on kind of the results I get sometimes with some of those exercises. So the kind of shoes he's into are more collector's items, I would say. I'm still not an expert. And by the way, whether or not you are super informed in the shoe world, I think you'll find some of the things that we talk about really interesting because I, again, not a big shoe expert, but I came out of here just kind of understanding the industry a little better. Also, it was a good reminder for me that whatever it is that you're into in life, if you're into plants or you're into rugs, I'm kind of just looking around right now, picking random things. Um, If you're into post-it notes, I don't know, it's kind of a random one, but whatever you're into is shoes, clothing, books, like because of the way technology works in 2021 and the future, and at least in the US, I can't speak for all countries. There are some countries where this may not be true, but if you're in the US, if you're in Canada, if you're in a, you know, one of the primary first world, like English speaking countries, this is pretty accurate that you can get access to a cell phone. You can get access to some form of technology, some way, somehow, and you can build a life out of something that you are really excited about. And it was really fun talking to Brennan because that's what he has done. It's, it's just incredible. Um, if you've only seen Yeezy's, you know, Kanye West shoe brand company, that's probably not even the best accurate description. Somebody that's really into shoes is going to rip me apart for that one. But, uh, you know, if you've only seen it on a news headline, this might give you a deeper understanding to kind of what really goes on. And I thought that was pretty cool. Well, that's it. You can, uh, you can also follow Brennan on Instagram. I think we talked about that a little bit, but I'll put a plug up with the episode. So here, oh, for those of you that are into shoes, there's some really cool spots like on some programs he's working on. For example, online shoe kind of marketplace programs. And if you're into reselling or buying and those types of things, well, he's got some really exciting projects coming. Uh, he partnered with Foot Locker and this company called Yellow Brick about design. So Anyways, have fun. Enjoy the episode, and here we go. Uh, how are you? Pretty good. I'm dealing with this fraud case that I came across. Fraud case? Kind of like I did like a little trial run, and what I thought would happen happened. So it's all case studies, for like research I'm doing, and unfortunately, my uh, hypothesis is correct. So what do you? Okay, so what do you mean? I mean, what do you got going on? What are you talking like? Hey, so. Uh, 
I, I was looking for some Yeezy boots. So I found some Yeezy boots and go to the regular site, StockX, blah, 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 all the sites. And this one guy said, I got some. So, you know, um, kind of I was airy on the internet, people don't sell anything. I was like, okay, how much you sell them for? He gave a very price like, I know what they were. And he gave the price like he's undercutting himself. I ain't cool, whatever. So he gave him his price. He said, oh, you got to also pay for shipping. His shipping was high as hell, like 50 bucks for shipping. I'm like, where are you shipping from? I'm like, oh, in the USA. Okay, that's how you make your money back, fine, whatever. So that was probably like Monday. So like on Wednesday, like, what's my tracking number? Oh, I ran into a problem. Um, it's kind of expensive to do next day, but excuse, excuse. I said, okay, either give me my tracking number or refund me. It's only two options, <laughs> refund mm-hmm. me or give me my tracking number. And today I checked back my tracking number. He disappeared. I told him before all this going down, I'm an engineer for a living. So maybe give my money back or refund me or send me my shoes. So he's trying to like hide from me. But of course, I can find anyone in the world. So uh, <laughs> I found him already. And so I'm trying to give him, I gave him another message. Like, please refund my money if I have to report you to all the proper authorities and blah, blah. So I give him to the morning before I, I go into engineering mode and he won't have a good weekend. So like I can kind of put a few pieces together just because of life experience, but yeah, is this your personal pair of, of Yeezy boots you bought or is this your own or is this part of the business thing? You're just on the hunt and that's part of the daily work. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, this is personal. I saw the Yeezys a couple years ago. I, okay. I, I missed out on them. I didn't have my size. So I found my size. Half of me saying it was kind of, it would end up this way, but you know, um, the money I spent on it is I can eat it. Like it's kind of like one my fiance called my trick off money. So it's money I was going to trick off anyway. So I'm not like, Oh, I needed this to pay a bill. I knew I shouldn't have did it. I'm getting my money back one way or another. It's one of those, like it felt too good to be true type things. Yeah, it was. As soon as I was doing it, I was like, Oh, I shouldn't have did this, but yeah. So probably trying to be a scammer. Um, but he's not going to scam me. And the scams in the world in general, like I remember I worked at a bank in my, in my like mid twenties, early twenties, this lady came in and she's like, I won the Canadian lottery. And immediately I'm like, all right, that's cool. Like I want to be happy for her, but yeah. also you want to not tell someone, Hey, by the way, you're in California. How'd you win the Canadian lottery? Yeah. Like, okay, great. Well, Hey, this is a really big check. And so she's like, yeah, what's the procedure for this? We have a couple of steps, you know, make sure we want to verify it, that type of thing. And I remember asking her like, when did you play the Canadian lottery? She goes, well, I, I never have. <laughs> so how did you win? You know, but, uh, cause that used to be like, people would do it over the phone and trick grandma. Now with the internet, the ability for fraud and for scamming, how about this? I kind of want to talk about that and tie it in. It sounds like it could be, I don't know if that's something you do with your, your work, but share a little yeah. bit about yourself in terms of what you're doing, what you got going on. You got a lot of at symbols on Instagram. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah. Day to day. I am a um, site operation engineer at Foot Locker, which falls on the Foot Locker, Ladies Foot Locker, Kids Foot Locker, Champ Sports, Foot Action, Foot Locker Canada, and last but not least, East Bay. Um, so that's day to day. Any day I can go anywhere from helping a customer unlock the account to helping a Yeezy or a Jordan or um, this week uh, the old school Griffies drop mm-hmm. and help them make sure that it goes from uh, setting up in the system to going live on the website. Speaking of what we just talked about, half the time that we have big launches, we have a lot of bots. So bots equals kind of like fraud cases. So half people try to get multiple pairs, which you can. Mm. So half my day just fighting off bots, making sure that a real person versus computer, is sure everybody um, that's using a credit card is their credit card. The bot thing, is that because there's a limit on how many pairs someone can buy? Yeah, a bot is pretty much a software that um, humans run to beat the curve because usually at nine o'clock, it's player game. Whoever hit the button faster, get a pair. So the bots found a way to get like a two minute head start. A two minute head start can be whether you get a pair or not. So every time we figure out one type of bot, a new one comes out. So whoever solves the ultimate bot problem <laughs> will be an instant billionaire for sure because hmm. everyone buy the software, all companies will buy it. Cause it's not the sneaker industry, it's all industry bots is in every industry. Either in the financial industry, when it's like trying to buy stocks, 
they still have a head start to when um when the market opens and the market closes so things like that yeah that's uh so i do a lot of work in like the the advertising marketing world and like online bot fraud they basically just have bots that crawl websites and so a business has a website that's paying a provider you know there's like google display which is really accredited but there's all these other sort of distributors of uh, how to buy advertising or middle people in a sense and there's billions of dollars of bot fraud in the financial industry which really interesting about it too is they I remember reading an article back in like 2009 or something like that where the the really big institutions when it came to day trading were investing tons of money just to get cables and buildings and locations closer to the main servers so that they could automate trading you know, some crazy figure like a millisecond or one one hundredth of a millisecond to be able to trade that much faster than other humans would. It was only like a penny or two pennies or a tenth mm-hmm. of a penny, but over the course of a day equaled millions of dollars. The, the first time this is going to make me super nerdy, figure out some past life, but there was a time in my life where I was trying to stay out of trouble and I played a bunch of video games one summer. So when we had bots, they were things that would just like sit there and reserve human spaces for video games. And now a lot of times I think when regular people think of bots, they think of like a robot from Star Wars or something like that. But it sounds like you said something that's across all industries. I'm sure bots is every industry for sure. Tell me more about this. Uh, I know some folks that are really into sneakers in the industry and some folks are kind of clueless. So to hear like, you know, okay, when a sneaker gets released, it's a big deal. You know, they're only releasing so many of them. How do you look at like one, obviously you're really excited about it. Everything seems like you're doing is tied into it, but how would you describe the sneaker world or industry to someone that has like no clue about it? Like where is that in 2021? I would say it's one of the biggest industries. Because subset of it is reselling. The reselling market by 2025 will be like $25 billion globally. So it's just not like reselling sneakers are, are some people's livelihood. That's all they do. They wait for drops, uh, sneaker drops, and they um, buy as many pairs they want or as they can afford and can get their hands on and resell them. How more sneakers are more popular than others is the resale value. For one of the most popular shoes, it would be always be the um, Air Jordan 1. For a lot of reasons, Air Jordan 1 might be the best uh, resale shoe ever because of it's a classic looking shoe. It has a lot of history to it. And it just, it resells well. Uh, it has a lot of co- colorways. It has a lot of uh, masculine colorway, a lot of girly colorways. So both guys and girls like them. It doesn't make your feet look big. It, it's not that um, expensive. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that way the Yeezys resell, most Yeezys uh, resell well. Some of them don't sell well because he goes too far with the design and it's kind of ugly colorway or how he got them um, sculpted. And this old school Air Maxes, like the, the Griffies did well. Um, any old school shoe that give you nostalgia, uh, it's going to sell well because it hasn't come out. Like the Griffey haven't been out. Since like the nineties, he he played for Seattle part of the nineties. So that that's like junior shoes. Um I could name that Mariners roster back then, by the way. Jay Buner, the Tito and Edgar Martinez, Griffey. That was the Randy Johnson, the unit stepping on the mound. Yep. That was uh the night I lived in Washington and so the nineties were really big for sports there with the Sonics too. Oh yeah, the Supersonics, but Sean Kemp and um, Gary Payton. That's how I learned how to play basketball. I was a terrible shooter because I was tiny. And I was like, well, that guy's tiny and he just steals the ball. So I got really good at defense and figured everything else out along the way. You remember those uh, original Kobe's? They called them like the moon shoes with the zip yeah, up. It was Adidas. Yeah, it was by Adidas. It looked like kind of like the Kamikazes. Sorry, not the Kobe's. Those were pretty crazy shoes too, but I was thinking the Paytons. The, I think they were the Paytons with the zip up, like the leather flaps. Oh, yeah, yeah. I remember those. Yeah, yeah. It reminds you kind of, if you remember the ramen shoes. Uh, ramen had some shoes that zipped up also. Dang. Okay, I don't remember those ones. I got I got teased pretty hardcore for having a pair of those Paytons. Yeah, it was super funny. They're like, what are the And the Kobe's, I did the same thing because the first pair of those that came out, they look like space foam and they're like yeah. space shoes. But the world yeah, before co- your time, yeah. Yeah, the world wasn't quite ready for that. And then when I wore them on the courts 
or one, if you had a pair of shoes like that, you just, you didn't wear them to hoop in. So I was like, I'm, yeah. I'm hooping in them. Even yeah, my, yep. my foot's like way bigger than the rest of my body. So <laughs> cool, man. Yeah, you, you mentioned something when we first started talking about, I think kind of getting into the industry in, in general, you know, when you talk about $25 billion for an industry, what's most exciting for you about the future? Like what you're doing, what it could become, what you're working on, those types of things. Yeah, actually, when I just got um, project management certified, we had a capstone project and I created something like a feature, product feature for the industry. So I'm most excited to see if that picks up. I'm flushing it out now. It's pretty much it's based around a resale industry, resale market and got good feedback. My instructor sales was great. I shopped around to a few um, director of product management and product development and then said I need to um, flush it out and bring it to market. So that's what, that's what I'm most personally most excited about because if it works, I'll be a um, industry expert, I will say, because it'll be something I tapped into that has been around for a while and I connected two dots and I'll just go around probably on panels, talking to articles, more podcasts and just um, explain how I came up with the idea and how I can um, help whoever else have an idea to flush it out. And I'll just probably, that'll be my contribution to the industry. Um, not to get rich, just to be, um, share my knowledge and just go, um, as I can. Yeah. Sounds cool. How much are you allowed to, cause it, is it something like it's still kind of top secret, so you can't show too many, share any too many details yet or. No, I'm just, I'm just scattered with it. Like I can explain it. It's, it probably <laughs> next time we talk, I'll probably be having more like structure. Like this is what it is. Cause right now I have 10 things. I have like a board, like this over here and over here. I'm trying to have, I can combine all 10 things. So me explaining it, I can be like, what the hell are you talking about? Because I would be like, I would say how it is in my brain, which is all scattered right now. So I know what it, how it should look, but I just got to make it show how to get it from like concept to in the hands of all the sneaker heads. What are the the two dots? If you if you don't mind talking about it a little bit more, I mean, it seems, it seems pretty, I like, I like stuff like that. When people have figured something out and provided a solution, what are the two dots that you connected? It would be uh, for someone that's shopping for a shoe to compare resale versus retail price in real time. I think you did a pretty good job of explaining that. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was pretty legit. Yeah, that's cool. So that's legit for someone that's just like flipping shoes all day. Yeah. And I got a name for it. I'm going to call it um, Rocket of Stock It. Nice. So it's come kind of flushing it out, flushing it out. Um, so right now, next week or so, I'm going to build it out. Might might do the website for it. Might do an app for it. Um, just got to get it out. <laughs> a dog has to get groomed. I told her just, okay, whatever. Pick a time. Let me just finish this, please. Are you married? <laughs> uh, no, I have uh, almost been married a couple of times, and I bailed. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> Yeah, that's the probably not the best way to put that, but that's what it is. Uh, how long you how long you been married? <laughs> uh, I'm not and talking to you. I'm, no, I'm no, no. I I just proposed on Halloween. I've only been engaged oh. since Halloween. Yeah, man, that's awesome. Congratulations. Remember you sharing that. When did you when do you think you you knew? Uh, 2020, 5 a.m. <laughs> okay, that's very specific. <laughs> It, it's weird because I was just thinking, I was I'm big on signs. I was like, okay, give me a sign. And like, and on that day at that time, I looked at her like, yeah, she's gonna be my wife. She's worth it. And then next day, one of my best friends was like, hey, you ever gonna propose? I was like, oh, oh shit! Like I was thinking that last night. Let's go look for rings. And so wow. that was like nine eleven around like mid September. Then later that month, maybe early October, I, I bought the ring. And then I hit it for a couple of weeks. And then I, I proposed on Halloween in New Orleans at one of the first restaurants. That's the first trip we took together and um, proposed in front of the restaurant. And that was it. That's pretty awesome, man. I, I think that uh, looking at this last year, you know, I was talking to a, a neighbor and a friend and it was like, wherever somebody was at, at the beginning of 2020, especially we were talking about dating and all kinds of things, but uh, 
throughout the year, most people just magnified what already existed. And I find that people that had a strong bond and strong relationships and loves like that just escalated um, for people that were in pretty serious relationships, Mm -hmm. or if they were not in a great place Mm -hmm. that Mm -hmm. expedited that process too. Yeah, for sure. The, the, um, The pandemic definitely, it was make it or break it, right? Either you're gonna like, you guys gonna grow stronger or you're just gonna break up. So now we're getting married October 9th, 2021. And that's pretty, that's pretty exciting. You know, when it comes to relationships, that's like one of the things I, I think about a lot or just talk to a lot of people about in general is that there's these different segments of our life and like our tribe really matters and has a really big influence too. You know, being single and dating, uh, especially for the last year, you know, in, in San Diego where I'm at, uh, one of the things I heard, like I had this little pattern of people that would say things like, oh, like nobody here wants a commitment and, and those types of things. Like guys don't want to get married. I heard this from girls. I'm like, well, like look around your friend group. You know, do you have a lot of single female friends? Like, and it was almost always like this mere reflection of what was going on around them. Are, are a lot of your friends uh, married? Now, yeah. Well, you're right. And we get to a certain age, single people hang with single people and married people hang with married people. Like my coach, I always say, like, winners hang with winners, losers hang with losers, you know. <laughs> so coach talk, but his thing of people that flocks together, the same people like you, right? Oh, dude, when I go out with my friends now, I in my case, it's like most everybody I know is married. I should say most every most people I hang out with are uh, with a few exceptions. But a lot of my friends are like in their late 40s or 50s. Mm-hmm. And so you know, we go out to dinner and it's not like a third wheel. I'm like the seventh wheel or the ninth wheel. And it's like all yeah. these couples and then Derek, and you can just feel the pressure. Like, Hey Derek, you're 35. You get married time soon. It's like I'm working on it. No, I mean, it was, it was just her. If it wasn't for Brie, I'll still be single and I'd be happy. No, for <laughs> real. I, yeah. I, I, I'm, I can say that with honesty. If it wasn't for her, I wouldn't be in a relationship. That's cool, man. I- I wouldn't. Uh, I'll be single because I'm a long wolf by her. I'm truly a long wolf. I do anything by myself. I go to brunch by myself. Who goes to brunch by themselves? And I have the grandest time. Then I go to the store and buy me some new shoes. <laughs> there you go, man. You got it all planned out. That's a superpower. I know going to the restaurants by myself, I actually enjoy doing it just to like kind of disconnect, not look at the phone, have a little headspace, but still have a good buzz around, like a good energy. And I'll yeah. go to a restaurant and, and the servers, hostess, are, you know, they're like, uh, on, they'll say like only one or just one. And I, I'll switch it around. I'll be like, you mean party of one? <laughs> and, yeah. And they're like laughing every time. And I'm like, oh, that's a good way to think about it. But just like sitting yeah. there and, you know, the relationships in general, I think until people have figured out how to be super happy on their own, like what you're talking about, bringing yeah. someone else into that mix doesn't usually seem like a, a good idea, a good recipe. Yeah, like we, me and Brie went out for Valentine's Day on Saturday. And it was, you know, you just people watch. So, like, couple, 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 group, group date, group date. There's one lady, like, at a table by herself. She had two chairs. So, maybe he's parking the car. He look up. Oh, she have an appetizer. Oh, she has a drink. She has the food. Oh, she got a check. Oh, she ate by herself. You could tell this lady was so content. Like, she had a beer. She had a wine. She had her meal. Was it on her phone? She's like in her zone. Damn, I like that. That's the good life. So let's talk about some of these things you got going on in terms of. So I know we're talking a bit about the sneaker industry, you know, side ops engineer, mm-hmm. foot locker, champs, East Bay. I think of East Bay and I think about the catalog I used to get. You broke mm-hmm. into it, and correct me if I'm wrong, but you really broke into this because you had a passion for something and you really wanted to turn it into work and you know that's something that is talked about a lot now like follow your dreams and follow your passion you get people stuck in corporate jobs or in suits they wake up when they're 40 and they're like this sucks what have i been doing with the internet i think so much has changed to where there's a tremendous amount of opportunity for people to take passions and take it to a a global audience or really just anything find something they like and convert that into a business what what made you you know, earlier you said, oh, it's not about getting rich, but like what, what really got you to that place of like, this is, this is where I want to be. This is what I want to do versus some other, other route. Pretty much you got to figure out what you're good at. Like I knew one thing, I know technology, 
and I, I know about the sneaker industry. Um, and so how this opportunity really fell in my lap. i tell you a story. At this time, when I first got my first initial call for this role, I was helping open up a restaurant and bar, and it wasn't going well. Like I thought this would be like, this one of my dreams, open up a bar, open up a restaurant, and it was kind of like falling apart. It was a living hell. We got it open, and it was in the eater, uh, like hottest 11 restaurants coming up. But long story short, it's not open anymore. But on the day that I got this call, like it was like I just wasn't in a good mood. Everything wasn't going good with the build out. My mom had to go to the hospital for chest pain. It was like a lot of like a lot of crap. And then I got a voicemail saying, hey, this is whoever was a recruiter for some firm. I have this role for you. If you're open to talk, give me a call. Everything's worth a conversation. So you call. He's like, hey, I got this opportunity with Foot Locker. Would you be interested? Sure. Like, uh, okay, well, let's set up a time to talk, and then we'll go from there. She had a good interview, had a good references, had a good background, whatever. So we got to the interview, and it was going well. So my now um, director of my department is like, why should I hire you? So I was saying, well, just like any other job I had in my life, I had to learn it. I don't have to learn this, right? So it might be some technologies that you guys use I've never seen before, but just like the other ones, I learned and I excel in it. And But I can guarantee you, you won't talk to anyone else that will know more about the industry than me. So I'll leave it at that. Like, I know about the industry. I will excel in this role. And so just think about it, right? So he thought about it in a couple of weeks. I got a call that, you know, I got the job. Uh, only thing was I had to start as a contractor and then I got converted maybe eight months later as permanent, which is fine. Like either way, most people in most tech companies, secret is they are contractors. Most, everybody's, a, everybody's not permanent, especially at Google. I, I worked at Google at the past and if I had a hundred people, 80 of them definitely contracted. And some people prefer a contract over permanent because you have more flexibility, you get paid a little more sometimes, you just gotta pay for your own um, insurance which sometimes the firm you go through has insurance also. So contracting shouldn't be frowned upon. It's just like the short contracts, that's what get people. But if you have a contract that's guaranteed a year or two, that's at this age, who stays at a company more than two years usually, right? So like, if you get two years at Google, you can always say I work two years at Google. So that's how I looked at it. And it was that really opened up a lot of doors for me because it's a conversation starter. Who do you sit across and say, oh, you worked at Google? I'm like. Tell me about it, right? Is it really what you, what I think it is? Uh, yes, it has great perks, but it's any other tech company. It's just Google. It has its name, has a great building. I will say the cafeteria is second to none, okay? <laughs> they have prime rib. It rivals any restaurant. I still think about this prime rib. I, I kid you not. <laughs> there you go, folks. If you're looking for a good job, uh, the prime rib Wednesdays, Google is a good reason <laughs> to work there. Making me hungry, man. Start to drool on this microphone. Uh, contracting work is is really, you know, I'm in California, and they changed a bunch of laws. All of my, almost all of my work has been contract work. I mean, in some way, shape, or form, it has. It actually has been since like 2014. I haven't really had a like an employee status or anything. And I, it's an opportunity. You know, that word is, I think, really important. Like, here's a two-year agreement. Here's what we'll do. Here's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, here's the flexibility, the autonomy. We've got the the systems, um, an opportunity to either earn a permanent spot or get that experience and go somewhere else. And the way the world is, I think most things should be incentivized like that versus the employee structure. I think you just get, you figure out how to get more done. I guess it's not for everybody, if somebody wanted to get like, what's your day look like? You know, like if somebody wanted to get into what you're doing and they're going, Hey, I didn't know you could be a professional in the sneaker industry. And, and do you have like, I guess, what kind of like education schooling do you need? Do you not need? It seems like you learn knowledge is obviously really important, but you know, how you get that knowledge these days True. is so yeah. different than it was 50 years ago. Good question. Uh, I'll say this. Well, I graduated from UIC and actually, graduated from the college of business but when it came to sneakers i've been in the industry i looked up this article to have an interview tomorrow with uh reebok actually they're trying to poach me for this product management job in the fashion line 
So I was looking at my first time. I, I worked on a project. I looked up. It was on April 1st. It would be 13 years ago. We had like, I used to work at the store called Subconscious, which is one of the top sneaker boutiques in Chicago. And we did an Adidas collab. And we created like Adidas uh, Law Firm, like a low top Adidas um, Chicago edition. It had the Chicago flag colors, had all the expressways. It had a lot of, it's, very, it's a very Chicago shoe. That was 13 years ago. From then, I never lost that passion for it. But then through parties with it, I did a lot of things through the industry. And then I graduated and then I worked at an Urban League. And so I was on the special events and marketing. But then you get sucked up by corporate America. I, I admit, you get sucked up sometimes. And you look up like, I'm not doing what I want. And then I ended up and wearing a suit to work. Like, well, how am I wearing a suit? Uh, okay, I have to shave. I have to get haircuts. Like, no, this, this can't be me, right? So I got a job at a tech company, but on this, the client side. And it was fine, great company, but the clients were crazy. Like, now, like, I don't think I want to talk to people for the rest of my, of my life. I want to get on behind the scenes. So I started working with the, the tech side of it, app side. Then as a slow to but really every job, I worked more and more with the applications, with the technology. And then... I got opportunity with Google and it really set me apart because it's had that on my resume, it had the experience, it had a lot of, had the management experience behind me. Then when um I was opening up the restaurant, I was focused on that. I had I had some savings. So I, I timed the right, like, oh, it's gonna open this month. I can just use my savings to coach me. And then Bullock and Call, I jumped on opportunity because of course I always wanted to get in the industry. But just like most people, I didn't know it was possible because we think of the sneaker industry, you just think about people just make them. You don't, you don't know about it's the marketing, it's the HR, it's the legal, it's the engineering, you name it. For every, whatever, as your company, is it a sneaker company? And when I found that, out, I was like, oh, I'm in. But then sometimes it's not enough to you just know about it. So you got to take courses, get certifications. Shout out to Yellow Brick. Yellow Brick has a lot of courses like Sneaker Essentials. They have Beauty Essentials, Streetwear Essentials, Global Sports. It has a lot of courses that give you those soft skills and hard skills that you need to just kind of make your resume look better because it's, it teamed up a lot of great uh, institutions and also both in educational and in the industry. Like for like the Sneaker Essential, they teamed up with Fashion Institute of Technology, but also Complex. So they have the educational side, but also the industry side. And they make the courses and you learn from industry experts. It's not accredited, but it is known in the industry that who you taught you, what you, what you learned. And it's still new, but it is starting to hold its own weight. A couple of days ago, I was asked to be an ambassador for the program to help recruit other people to the program, to help them learn like I learned it, yeah. And that's actually, I mean, that's really how we got connected. You know, my my nephew, who's 10, junior, dude, that dude, he just, for 10 years old, I mean, what those shoes I sent you, it, it's crazy, you know, at first, because I'm his uncle, so I'm like, all right, he does good work. You know, I've got his work, I've got like paintings and stuff around my place that he's done, and the the kid is super sharp over uh over summer last year he we talked about this he had a little rock business where he painted some mm. rocks my sister posted him on the facebook marketplace and people were going hey i want to buy that so he like when he does something people enjoy it so we did these sneakers i'm like is this a, a me thing you know i'm his uncle so i think it's cool so i started sharing it with people and uh when you see something like that at at 10 because there's part of me that having gone to school, you know, like you went to school, I went to school. I realized for me partway through school, like, okay, this isn't really for me. I still finished it, but I knew that the things that I wanted to learn in particular about entrepreneurship and running businesses, and that was going to be more from experience and trying a bunch of different things. Part of me wonders if you get put in a system, can it block any of that creativity or is it you know, a true artist is going to like take what they want from it, even at a young age and still be able to evolve in that design. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I agree. Well, if it wasn't for track, I would never went to college, to be honest. I was thinking of going to the military or becoming a barber because mm -hmm. it was instant money. It was instant money. It was instant like I'm my mom's house. I'm my parents' house, right? 
But I got a trash scholarship and I won some run. I won some run and the transfer schools and then the team was full. So I like, okay, let me focus on school. And at UIC, I, I was ma- major in business, but it went from management to marketing to finance to accounting. Then they had this new program pop up, entrepreneurship, which is all of them combined. I said, cool, I'm a major in entrepreneurship. So I stuck with that and I graduated on time, four years, five years, got transferred, but four years at UIC. Graduated with my first job. I graduated on Saturday, started at the Urban League on Monday, and then was coasting for a while. And then, but yeah, like you said, it get to a point that what am I doing? Am I just going in circles? Am I doing this? Am I doing that? Like, what do I want to do? So now you got to figure out. Like, to be honest, I'm still figuring out what I want to do. I know I'm, I'm on the right path because I'm happy, right? I'm happy. I'm not dreading waking up. I'm not dreading, like, to worry. I was just like, I know I'm on a good path, but I guess when I figure out what I want is when I start helping people. That's why when you reached out to me, of course, uh, John, for 10 years old, it's excellent. For any age, I looked at the shoe many times. It's excellent no matter what age it is. For it to be 10, that's what makes it mind-blowing uh, because I can't do it. I'm on, I won't even try. I won't try to do it because I can't. I will. I'm, I'm never. I'm gonna make the shoot. I know my talents is not that. I know that I can set him up, make some calls, make sure that he can shine. That I help him shine as much as possible. That's my strength. So. Yeah, we we appreciate that too. I know he does too. He's excited. He got you know we done a little tear on Instagram sharing those shoes, and I shared it with people, and he got a pretty healthy number of responses. You know, he was talking to us about wanting to be famous. A miniature taste of that when you wake up and you've got, you know, X number of Instagram direct messages, just kind of what that feels like and getting ready for that. So even small taste. And he posted a a TikTok video a while back. I think his parents kind of took him off TikTok for a minute because he got, you know, some crazy 24,000 views or some big number like that, whatever it was, and the amount of comments, right? And to be young and, and kind of experience that like yeah. you stand up in front of class and you do something silly and you get three or four people that respond that's one thing to have a hundred people <laughs> a thousand people throw stuff yeah. at you. It, i think in, in some ways it can make you stronger but in some ways you have to be ready for it so it, it's cool that he has like his parents and everybody around to like talk and support that because he's super talented so i know we appreciate uh what you're doing for us on that and so companies like yellow brick so let's say there's some kids out there going what you can design sneakers you can get in the sneaker game there's some adults there's gonna be like a 50 year old person there's this and go why am i wearing this high like maybe i should be out there hanging out learn about this sneaker stuff what are different industry opportunities for people that you see that it really anybody can get into in the next like two three four or five years really i work with yellow bricks vp of brand partnerships in the last three, four months, really talk to people from nonprofits in the beauty industry, like people in the nonprofit in the beauty industry. A couple of people at Google has some programs that we're trying to collab with. We're about to set up some meeting up with people at GoDaddy, a couple other organizations that is in the media. What I think the future is definitely always going to be big data and uh, cybersecurity. That's just me thinking like an engineer. Anyone... They can be, like the sneaker industry is so wide. It can go all to anywhere from the call center all the way up to the CEO, right? So in between those two, call center, it could be people that works in a store, people that work in a field. It can be this all type of engineers or developers. So that's the future. Like if I had to really think what the future is, which is a good question. It kind of stunned me right now because I, I never really think about that. I'm so like, I wonder what I want to do, but what is the future, right? I think the future in my mind would be technology, sports, and baby boomers. Mm. Because baby baby boomers not going anywhere. Like I'll joke with my mom or my auntie, like whatever they say something to like, oh, you guys, this, you guys, that, your generation. I'm like, oh, it's because your generation is not dying off. Mm. I'll just get out here taking all our money. (laughs) They don't like that joke very much. Oh man. Yeah, baby boomers were not dying. <laughs> yeah, I uh who was it the other day? I don't know. This dude probably he's a little bit older. And I was like, well, where do you get those shoes? And he had some like 
1980s looking Barclays or something with the purple or whatever on yeah. it. And I'm like, cool, man. Everybody needs like, well, they're comfortable and they're like good. And I'm like, hey, I think it's cool. It's, you know, whatever retro, if you want to call it that. But it, it, it sounds to me like in general, when I think of just the population and technology and the way we can all stay connected, like I don't have to, I'm not limited to a five block radius in terms of what I can do in life. Now, not everybody's like that. There's certain parts of the world that aren't quite there yet, or even the U S or North America, there's some evolution, you know, Elon Musk is launching these satellites and this Starlink thing. And it seems like pretty much no matter where you are on the globe in the next few years, you're going to be able to have some sort of access to internet, assuming you have the resources, but knowing him, he's going to try to make it in a way that everybody has access to it. So you, you really can't sit here and go, what do I love? How do I, I make a living out of it? Something that keeps me happy. Like you're talking about, you wake up, I I love waking up at like 4 or 4.30 in the morning. I gave up on alarm clocks a while ago. People think I'm crazy. I'll talk to someone, you know, it's like 6 a.m. my time and 9 a.m. East Coast time. They're like, 6 a.m. your time. Like, why the heck are you so happy? I'm like, because I woke up again today. There's a lot of fun stuff on the calendar. Yeah, yeah. It sounds like if, if you like sneakers in general, and there's a lot of other stuff you mentioned too, but if you go, man, I like sneakers. I need this amount of money to pay my bills and enjoy life. Like, it seems like there's something out there for pretty much everybody that's into it. I believe so. And I'll just go back to your, like, why are you happy? Because I woke up. <laughs> uh, like I tell a lot of people, I'm very, I don't stress about pretty much nothing, right? Because a lot of things that we stress about, we can't control. Um, so go through life, my fiance, my friends, whoever else, get mad. And I, I listen, they vent and go, I can't believe I can't believe this, I can't believe this, can't believe that. And I wait till they get wait till they get done. I look at them right in their face, like, why are you getting mad at humans for acting like a human? Like that's human nature. So why are you, they can't like everything that happened right now, I'm big on this, it's already predestined. Like ours ours talking, you hitting me up on Instagram, this podcast me drinking this water it's it's everything i think everything's predestined right so a lot of people think like, i'm crazy for thinking this way like well us having this conversation me not getting mad you getting mad me saying why you mad that's that's been written down a thousand years ago like a million years ago it's already predestined so no nah, man you know it there's a cool story i'm gonna tell a little story now the ability to like one, the, the definition of optimistic is to be confident and hopeful for the future. So most people think like, oh, that person's positive or whatever. Like, yeah, positive, but positive is different than optimistic. Optimistic is just knowing that if I manage life a certain way and I take certain actions, like I can be more confident about the future. But there's this really cool, we are talking about in terms of this like predetermined, you know, destiny, that type of thing. It's called the Tao story of the farmer. So here's the settings, farm, farmer, his son is like the farm hand, helps him with everything. And so uh, one day, you know, he's like right outside this little village and his horses run away and the village goes, they're like, oh my gosh, your horses run away. And that's so terrible. And the farmer's like, hmm, I don't know, maybe. And they're like, all right, this guy's pretty weird. So his son runs off and gets the horses and brings them back. And he brings back some wild horses and the villagers are like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. Like you brought back, you know, some extra horses. And he's like, well, I don't know, you know, maybe whatever. And they're like, all right, this guy's really weird. Like how come he doesn't get excited about anything? Uh, it doesn't get riled up like negative or positive, right? The son is, is breaking in the horses and he breaks his leg. And the villagers are like, oh man, your son broke his leg. Like the, he can't help out. And the farmer's like, whatever, you know, maybe. And they're like, all right, this guy's super weird. So a war breaks out and they go around and start gathering all of the uh, all of the young men to fight in the war. And because the leg is broken, the son can't go. And the villagers like, wow, how great. Like your son gets to stay home. And the farmer just goes, I don't know, maybe. It doesn't matter what happened, whether the horses ran away, the horses came back, the son broke his yeah. leg. It was always a maybe because you don't really know no. what's coming next. And it could have been that his son you know, was the, became a general that like won them the war or maybe did something that created peace. So you don't really know what the outcome is. Staying neutral on all of that, you know, working confidently towards a better future, but being able to take things for what they are and saying, hmm, maybe, to me, that's a really powerful thing for life. 
Yeah, I, I relate to that. I definitely um, present for that story. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And people will call that being nonchalant. I'll call it just being real. Being a realist. I'm a, I'm a realist. Like a lot of women, we talk about women, right? We could go back to just the battle of the sexes. All the women, right? I saw I have a lot of friends as girls, have sister, have mama, get a girl, got a sister, whatever. So we always have this conversation, would you rather type thing, right? Would you rather have a guy that just like he's this lovey dovey, he loves you, he loves you, he loves you, loves you, loves you, loves you. But that's all that's all you got to offer. He just loves you. He don't pay any bills, don't do this, don't do that. Or would you have a guy that you no know, respects you, take care of you, and you don't have to worry about nothing? But you know, he's not, you know, lovey. Like he's not mean. Like it's kind of like he's one guy that like, oh, he's just Oh, he's lost me. He's so crazy about me. Or you have a guy that I don't have to worry about nothing. And I actually do love him. But I say some woman needs the reinsurance. And someone just needs the support. You can't have all. You can't have all. You just need reinsurance. Mm. You need support. Well, I want both. Well, well good luck. Hey, I take care of my girl. I love her. I, whatever she needs, I got her. Like, she's beautiful is all that. But I'm not on. If she mess up, I'm gonna let you know you mess up. It's not like I hope baby be okay. If it's not going, if it's not okay, it's not okay. But how can we make make sure it's okay? Some women can deal with it. Someone like no, I just need you to tell me it's okay if I'm wrong. Damn me, because if I tell you you're right when you're wrong, I'm gonna keep saying that. Then 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 I'm gonna blow up. And be like, what happened? You sounds right. No, I, I can't take it no more. Yeah, Instead man. of saying like off jump like. Yo, you was wrong. This is why you were wrong. But let's let's talk about how this this won't can't happen again, or how can I help you stop it from happening again? It sounds like you're just a fan of the truth. That's how I always look at it. And you can say the truth in a way that hurts. So you don't want to. We don't necessarily want to do that. Just run around like being an no. ass to people. But the ability to be like gentle and direct, and just say, hey, here's you know here's where I'm thinking. It, if you don't do that, things do build up. And then it's like a, you know, a pot and it just overflows mm -hmm. and it's boiling. So it sounds like you had a good thing going. I imagine a lot of those things, the ability to have tough conversations from a place of like love probably helps a lot in business too, at least in my experience. Yeah. So if you have goals and you're working towards something, there's going to be those moments where should I let that one go? Should I let it build up or should I should I tackle it head on and, and tackling it head on? It, in my experience, it's generally the best way to do things because then people will always understand too like i don't have to worry about what i say around brennan because i know he's always going to be honest with me yeah. you create comfort and psychological safety versus this weird veil or tension of like oh you know what's going to happen and there's no clarity and that stuff so i think you nailed it yep so i just got this idea let's play this little word game. I, I, I say a word, tell me the first thing come to your mind. Because okay. you saying, yo, uh, what you just said, I had this thought. Because a word popped in. Okay. So when I say the word accountability, what comes to your mind? Responsibility. Okay. Because when you you were saying that, you just, it's honest to do that. Like, it's all about this accountability. I just want people to be accountable for their actions. Mm -hmm. Accountable, it means like, it could be like, I'm not telling you what to do, but you can't expect something out of someone and don't do it in return. I'm, I'm big on that. Like, you want something from me, okay, I'll expect the same from you without even me saying, can I expect the same from you? Because you come to me saying, I want to talk to you every day at 530. So let me every day at 5 30, you're gonna be available for us to talk. Right. So it's one of some things don't have to be confirmed. Some things will just be given. Like you want something out of me, like, oh, I just want you to be available at 5 30. I'm saying I'll be available at 5 30. That's not accountable. Commitment. So, commitment, accountability. Yeah. And I know, and I was late to our meeting today, and that's something that I was so sharp on for like five or six years. But uh I find when you're talking about that commitment, that accountability, another word I could throw in there is ego. I found this really cool quiz that tests ego. And what I found is if somebody scores over a certain amount, they generally have a really hard time being accountable for their own actions and are constantly looking 
at the outside world and saying, oh, this is that person's fault or this thing happening. When people get a really like healthy or lower score on this ego test, they tend to be more self-accountable. I literally remember walking outside one time when it was cloudy and going, man, this weather sucks. And there was a little part of my brain that just went, what did I do lately? Like, what did I mess up that the weather is cloudy? Putting myself in that part of a, like an accountable stage to where like the world around you is totally influenced by your actions and thoughts. Yeah. So give me a word. First thing come to mind. I'm thinking of words to give you. And like, cause oh. there's any word, it could be the most random word. Like first thing come to your mind. Like, I like that word earlier. Cause we were talking about it. How about opportunity? Opportunity. I would say first thing come to mind, I hear opportunity. It's the next generation that's coming up right now. Um, because this is the time that although teenagers doesn't that they don't listen, they're still um like they will still listen if they the kids that you want will be the kids that you're talking to, right? Just like adults, just like any other generation, you're not gonna help everyone. If they want help from you. So when I hear opportunity, I, I think next generation, I think the kids in high school now that just trying to find a way, they're trying to find, I have an idea in their mind and they can't get it out. Like, I just, I want to do something, but I can't explain it. I want those kids. I want the kids that people like, kind of not write off, but the kids, like, oh, well, whatever, like next. I want the kids that don't have the 4.0s, but may have maybe up to 2.8, but they scored. 28 on the ACT, things like that, right? Kids that are like, oh, well, not traditionally, you shouldn't be in this school or that, like that. Because so I was that kid, like, right, I had decent grades, but that's kind of like, I, school wasn't really for me. Like, I did enough just to get by, just keep my scholarship, just to do that, because I didn't have anyone tell me any better. Next generation, we'll just wrap with that. So you were, we were talking about words. How about this? Let's do... 2025 ownership ownership yep mm, ownership you... rather it's home rather it's property businesses um stocks and bonds um yeah artwork this ownership yeah Dude, I get hit up by this company called Masterworks asking me to invest in oh, <laughs> Me I'm too. At. Yeah, they got a good plan going because I think some of it is like uh, like funding, like you can pay into a fund and own a piece of a painting or something like that. So I think ownership's cool. Speaking about the next generation, I'm I'm constantly, I mean, you, you saw like when we did with my nephew, like I, I have six, seven nieces and nephews. I feel like at one point I felt bad for my sister. I'm like, am I hanging out with like, I feel like I call the nieces and nephews more than I call you. And I felt kind of bad for a little bit. I'm like, but they're kids and they're so cool. But I'm always thinking about like, what's the world going to look like for them? How can we leave them in a better place? How can we leave the things we're doing in a better place? When you said ownership, I immediately thought of the ability for humans and kids to, I mean, just people in general to have more ownership of their life because yeah. of the tools that we have and not being stuck in an office and well, you were talking about the grade thing. I remember getting my final report card for school and I, I missed a bunch of school. Like I barely, I don't even know that you could technically say I, I completed like sixth, seventh and eighth grade. In fact, eighth grade, I did part of just kind of a chaotic mess. And, and the there was like a little ranking on the report card, the, the final like high school yeah. graduation. Yeah, and it says like, there are like 270 kids in my class and I ranked like, 267th i mean there was no <laughs> it was there was also like a number of credits and i don't know the math is pretty big i think i have to go back and look it was pretty bad i was in the bottom when you say you just crossed the finish line it was like i got on top of the finish line and then <laughs> just stopped on top of it and was like i finished the race i didn't really have really any influence in fact most of my life was like outside of school and my sister one time, like we were talking and the, she, the kids were having a little, you know, some challenges trying to figure out the school thing. And I remember getting on the phone and being like, guess what, guys? School is not that important. And my sister goes, but yeah, she freaks out. She's like, that's not what I told you to talk to them about. Like, what's going on? You could just see the panic and everything. 
but something I learned is like, hey, do enough to pass and get by. And then all of that extra time that you have, figure out what you love. And that's what I love about Jonathan is he really took that and, and ran with it in a lot of ways and spends, you know, spend his time on art and those other things. And you, the amount of time you spent learning about the sneaker industry, that knowledge to be able to take fun learning things and translate it into the adult world. I really think that's where we are and that's where things will continue to go. Yeah, I agree. That's funny. <laughs> Jonathan taking it like, oh, I'll do just enough to get by, but <laughs> send me some more Air Force One. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, we're going to have to we'll figure that out. Maybe get you a, a pair out there too. Thanks for all that you are doing. Super cool to get to know you a bit better. You obviously got a lot of cool stuff going on, so it's really neat to see your journey. I think you did an excellent job of describing your your project. I mean, you did it in like two to three sentences. I think anybody that may not know a single thing about sneakers could go, oh, that makes sense. Like if I want to know what the pricing is and what, yeah, just the resale value. I mean, that's a tool that could, I don't know if it exists in other industries. Maybe it does, but. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's. It's kind of like it has a couple of websites that do it already, but nothing in the same one-stop shop. Uh, we'll do another one just for like the, the kickoff. But cool. This was fun. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely, Brennan. Have a good night. Get that dog right. groomed. <laughs> okay. All right. Talk to you later. Catch you later. Hey, bye.